Thank you so much, Maharaj, for joining Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. We are so, so, so very fortunate for your association. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas. Maharaj, today um, we will be um, we will be starting from Canto 7, chapter number 9, verse number 14. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tadhyachamanum Tadhyachamanum Asasa Tadhyachamanum Asasa De Chahasta Tayadhyam Modeta Sada Api Vikshika Sarpa Hatyam Okascha Nir Vitim Ita Pratyanta Sarve <coughs> Rupam the Shringa Vibhayaya Jana Smaranti hmm. My dear Lord Nasringadev, please therefore cease your anger now that my father, the great demon Harani Kashipu, has been killed. Since even saintly persons take pleasure in killing of the scorpion and the snake, all the worlds have achieved satisfaction because of the death of this demon. They are now they are confident of their happiness and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear. Purport, the most important point in this verse is that all saintly persons never desire the killing of any living entity. They take pleasure in the killing of envious living entities like snakes and scorpions. Rani Kashipu was killed because he was worse than a snake or a scorpion. And therefore, everyone was happy. There was no need for the Lord to be angry. The devotees can always remember the form of Lord Sringadev when they are in danger, and therefore the appearance of the Sringadev was not at all inauspicious. The Lord's appearance is always worshipful and auspicious for all sane persons and devotees. Om Gyan to Midandasya Gina Jana Salakaya. Chaksun Melitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvase Sasun Yavandi Pastyatya De Sitarine Manchakopa Uvischa Kripa Sindhu Pae Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhundit Yananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So devotees are, are well-wishers of all living entities. But when the Lord comes to eliminate the demons, they find great pleasure in hearing how the Lord has shown mercy to this living entity by destroying their attempts to continue their demoniac activities. This is the mercy of the Lord. So that everyone is benefited. The demon gets liberation and the devotees become happy because they're freed from the influence of demoniac personalities. So there are there are persons who are demons, and they like to give trouble to others. That's their business. That's their main business is to give trouble to others. And so when they become too too much, too profuse, the Lord comes. Yada yada yadarmas yaglanar bhavati bharata. Abhutanam adharma syatatat maham srijami aham avritta nayam sarunam vinasana hitchaduskritam 
dharma samstartanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge so the lord comes every once in a while when the world gets full of demoniac persons so we see right now we're in a situation like that there are as Prabhupada said in 1972 that the demons are only increasing and they will continue to increase and they will give you more and more trouble but he says don't worry Krishna has come in the form of his holy name Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare and one can chant the holy names of the Lord and be freed from all of the demonic influences that somewhat pervade the material energy and of course one can also pray as it recommended here by here Nishingo Ridaye Nishingo or Nishringadev he's in the heart He's also manifested everywhere at the same time. So the devotees always take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in, either in his transcendental form as Lord Nisringadeva or in his form as the chanting of the Holy Name, which is non-different. Well, the devotees don't have anything to worry about, but there will be disturbances caused by the demons that is expected. As Srila Prabhupada said, um, we have no trouble with Maya. Maya, where a devotee is a, a, the friend of the devotee. Why? Because Maya helps the devotee become Krishna conscious by setting up situations where the devotee has a choice between Maya and Krishna. And by choosing Krishna, the devotee makes advancement in devotional service. And uh, so the devotee, so Maya, Prabhupada said, actually is the friend of the devotee, although she works to test the devotee by bringing situations which will attract the devotee away from Krishna. But the devotee knows that this is simply Maya, therefore he takes shelter of the Lord and makes advancement in each and every one of these situations. The more we accept Krishna over Maya, the more we become purified from our attraction to this material energy, the more we make uh, progress towards our loving relationship to Krishna. The more we accept Maya, the more we go down. So Maya is simply an opportunity. It's like before you can get a position, say in society, you may have to take an exam. And the exam may be very difficult to pass, but then again, if you want the position, you have to take, you have to pass that exam. So Maya is a testing agent for the devotee. She's not an enemy of the devotee, simply a testing agent to help bring us to a higher platform of devotional service. And if we fail the test, we get a chance to pass it again. Again, Maya will come with another test to help us. But Prabhupada said, because there are demons in the world, then there is so much disturbances. But all the disturbances in the world are caused by the demons. People wonder why there's so much problems in the world. Well, due to the demons. And therefore, by here, Nishringo, Ridaye Nishringo. Um, what is that? Tavakana. Namaste Narasringhahiya Paladaladayine Hiranyakashi Purvaksaha Silatan Kam Nakanaya Vahir Nishingo Ridaye Nishingo Wherever I go, Lord Nishringa Dave is there. He is always there to protect me. And one, but one should pray to the Lord for protection. Lord Nishringadev gives protection from dangers in this material world, which are mostly caused by the demons. And there are other dangers also. But those dangers are built into to material energy. It's like it's very dangerous to do things that anything could happen. You know, just like crossing a street. If one is not careful, one can become 
victimize and undergo great difficulty. So one has to be careful. This material world is a dangerous place. Just by nature, even without the demons, it's a dangerous place. But with the demons, it's become more dangerous and more, uh, what we say, life-threatening. But still, Krishna is more powerful than any demoniac influence or and, and also his material energy. So devotees feel happy. Prahlad Maharaj, he's giving this prayer here. He's telling his father, you know, the demon, my father, he's telling his, he's telling the Lord, my father, the demon is killed. We're all dancing. We're all happy now that that demon is gone. And uh, so don't become angry further. But the Lord, why was the Lord continue to be angry even after he killed the demon? There was no need to be. But because the Lord was angry because that demon had shown, given so much disturbance to his pure devotee. So when the pure devotee is is uh, harassed by the demons and the Lord comes to save, he becomes very angry at these persons who cause uh, harm to his devotees. So that's an instructions for the for the for the non devotees who are demonic like. If you cause harm to the devotees, you can expect to get some reaction from the Lord. But the devotees are a well-wisher of everyone, and therefore they don't hate anyone. But still, they always take shelter of the Lord in order to go on in their devotional service. The Lord Nishringadev not only protects from the point of giving protection from dangers in this world, but he also gives protection from the illusions that this material world presents in the form of sense gratification. So Maya is always there. Uh, the material energy gives us so many opportunities to deviate in our Krishna consciousness. And these are illusions. Hmm. Maya, what Maya means, Maya means mercy. Uh, Maya also means illusion. So the attraction of the material energy is a form of illusion. And therefore, a devotee takes shelter of Lord Nishringadev and gets the knowledge they need simply by taking shelter. The Lord will, will awaken the devotee that, hey, this is an illusion. You don't need it. <laughs> you don't really want it. So the Lord works through the intelligence of the of the devotee to to warn him or to to guide him away from the illusions of this material world, which are so perverse, or so all-pervading, so many forms of getting illusions. It's like so many things on the market now we can buy. It's unlimited, as though, and they're producing more and more of these uh, material things just to make money for the, the people can become somewhat wealthy through capitalistic propaganda. But devotees, they know, eh, we can live simply. We don't need all of this stuff. <laughs> what do we need? I was just reading Srila Prabhupada was, was saying that, you know, we've created this civilization now and we have to go to, we have to drive two and three hundred miles every day to go back and forth to work. Where years ago, people were living on the farms and all of the personal needs were done right in your own backyard. You didn't have to buy a car, pay for insurance, be, be affected by all kinds of dangers while driving and so many things to maintain a car. And then, you know, just to go to get some money, you're actually, you're actually spending the money on the car to get to the, just, to, just, just to pay for the car most of the time. <laughs> so you can go to work. So if you don't need a car, you don't have to worry about going to work. Well, so people live simply years ago and nowadays. They think this is advancement. The more troublesome the society is, the more they think it is it's actually advancement. But it's not, it's advancement towards darkness or ignorance and so on. Right. Anyway, that's another subject, but that's point that point is also there, is that uh, we've created a society where all of these illusions of happiness comes in the form of 
struggling so hard to somehow achieve them, which they cannot really give happiness in the first place. And then also the Lord also, he, uh, Prahlad Maharaj gives a beautiful prayer. Om Namo Bhagavate Nara Sringhaya Namas Teja Teja Se Avir Avir Bhava Raja Naka Raja Damsa Kamasayam Radaya Radaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abayam Abayam Atmani Bhuyasta Om Shram. He says, um, Raja Daka Raja Naka Raja Damstra, uh, you have powerful teeth, Raja Naka. Raja Dumstra, you have powerful nails. So please rip out my desires for material enjoyment in this material world. Rip them out of my heart by your nails and by your teeth, which are so powerful and very effective when you apply them. So this is the Lord. The Lord devotees pray to the Lord, please relieve me from all of these illusions that come by way of trying to enjoy this material world. The Lord Nishringa is their best friend. He's 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 worshipped in the mood of a, a very kind and powerful pa parent. He's we worship Lord Nishringa Dev in the mood of Atsaya Ras. Uh, he is the protector. He is the father. He is the kind parent of all living entities, and he's always available to give protection to devotees, provided the Lord the devotees take his his shelter. And, and devotees who know, there are many, 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 even within the la last 50, 60 years of the ISKCON movement in the West, how many, it's, you can write books, there has been books written about it, of all of the times that Lord Nishringa Hadev has appeared in the lives of the devotees in ISKCON to save them from dangerous situations and to guide them away from the illusions of the material world. So Narasimha Dev is very, he's very merciful, he's very kind, he's like a loving father. You can see how he holds his pure devotee, Pallad Maharaj, in his hat, a lap. Although he's very fierce by nature still, the devotees see him as a very kind, loving personality. But for the non-devotee demons, he is death personified. It's the example of the cat and the rat and the cat and the kitten. The cat grabs the rat. Now the rat is in the clutches of death. But that same cat carries its own kitten in its mouth and the kitten's thinking mother. <laughs> so the Lord is like, you know, the danger, the dangers for the non-devotees and for the for the devotees, the loving object of protection. This is so we don't have anything to worry about except not becoming lazy in our Krishna consciousness. If we become lazy, fail to take shelter of the Lord, then we might be influenced and somewhat uh, disturbed by the influence of this demoniac society. To take shelter. Bahir Nishringo Ridaye Nishringo. Everywhere I go, Lord Nishringa Devi's there. He's in the heart. He is in everywhere within existence. So the bodies are always happy because they have no fear of this material energy. Okay, I'll stop there and open it up for discussion. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for your wonderful class. Um, how very sweet, how very simple, and yet we fail to keep our mind fixed in Krishna consciousness. And Maya keeps coming and testing us, and we keep failing. And the interesting thing is, Krishna is guiding us through our intelligence. And we know what is good for us, and yet we are not able to um, apply it because we we get lazy in Krishna consciousness, as you said. So yeah, one on, day lazy, yeah. On the package of the cigarettes, it says one who's one who smokes can get, you know, 
Yeah, so we can kill cancer, so many other diseases, and still people smoke. They can see uh, how dangerous it is to inhale these things called cigarettes, but still they do it because attachment, attachment. So we, because we cannot, because it can, we cannot give up our attachments to the ephemeral activities of the, of the material energy, we have to struggle hard to become mm. conscious. So how do we get rid of a habit, Maharaj? By replacing it with a spiritual habit. So habit is formed after a series of activities in the same way. You create the opposite activities and form a new habit which counteracts the old habit and destroys the old habit. Get right. in the habit of chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> Get in the habit of serving the devotees. Get in the habit of reading the books. <laughs> Get in the habit of worshiping the Lord. Get in the habit of going to the temple and yeah, yeah, develop a spiritual habit. <laughs> but Very nice. spirituality is not just part of life, it is life. If you make it part of life, you won't be able to understand it or appreciate it for what it is. It is life itself. We are not material beings, we're spiritual beings. The material world is meant for our defeat. We've come here simply to enjoy separate from Krishna. Now we think it's all right to enjoy separate from Krishna, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Every time we try to enjoy separate from Krishna, we get a reaction for that. And if we continue, it can these reactions also become more severe. So Jeep Jago, Jeep Jago, Gorda Chanda Bohule, Kota Nidra Jayo Maya, Isa Chira Kohule, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. Chant the holy names. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. We will go ahead and um, we have opened the session for question answer session. I see already. Uh, Param Pabini, Shama Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Thank you, Mataji, for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a nice, wonderful, and inspiring uh, like lecture. And that talks about me, how I'm, I'm failing every time, from, like in the test of Maya. And yeah, and thank you so much, Maharaj. Don't so, give up. <laughs> Just don't give up. That's all. Keep trying. <laughs> thank you so much, Maharaj. Please pray, Maharaj. My question is that uh, in the in the translation of the verse, there says that the saint the saintly person is pleased when the scorpion or the snake is tied another another time the way the, the, the our scripture says that the saintly person sees all the living entities whether it is a dog or the dog eater or the elephant or everyone is in a equal vision so how we can understand these two things well the scorpion and the snake are envious by nature, they will attack someone without provocation. Uh, many animals will not attack, or even living beings will not attack another unless something there is some pro provocation. The scorpions and snakes don't need any provocation, they just attack. So envious people who are like scorpions and snakes, they are also uh, like like Harani Kashipu or people who are similar to that, when they're killed, the roadies become happy. 
Devotees don't go around killing demons or snakes or scorpions. They don't do that. But if they are killed, they find uh, they don't lament because they know that is the best thing for these living beings. <laughs> They're botherations for others. They're sources of suffering for others. Hmm. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances to your this sweet Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, even when you were just mentioning that we have to make spiritual life as a life, not a part of our life. That is so important. We forget that. We forget that. We are trying to make the spiritual activities a part of our life, but we have to live that life constantly. Thank you so much for your eye-opening statements, Maharaj. We have, thank you. We have Shiva Kumar Prabhu. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question? Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Send out terms, Maharaj. Please accept for him. One question, Maharaj. Um, the self-realization has uh, two parts, right, Maharaj? Uh, one is uh, realizing that I am not the body and I am not the mind. Uh, that's the first part. And the, sec and the other part is I am servant of Krishna. So uh, in my practice, Maharaj, I find it very difficult to balance these two aspects in the sense if there is... Uh, lenience towards the first part that I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, then the motivation for any activity comes down. And even there is tendency to uh, lean on uh, liberation or in more move towards focus on liberation than service to Krishna. On the other hand, if the servant of Krishna aspect is uh, focused, it seems sometimes it brings down the pursuit to material platform. And there is a tendency to look, look for uh, material results for even the devotional service, Maharaj. So I find it difficult how to kind of balance these two and still do the devotional service at the spiritual platform level, something that I wanted to hear your wisdom. Hare. Uh, what's the loss? If you, if, you, if you know you're not the body and mind, then you'll, you'll understand that material activities are simply... Um, requirements for maintaining the body and mind just like if you have a car you have to maintain your car but you're not the car <laughs> it gets you where you want to go but at the same time you're not the car still you have to maintain the car so we maintain the body and mind so we can engage in devotional service That's all. then that, that we, we don't neglect the body and mind but we don't sit there polishing the car all day either. <laughs> That's not the program. <laughs> program is do what's necessary to maintain the body and mind as given by the scripture. Scripture give you injunctions. Don't sleep too much or sleep too little. Eat too much or eat, eat too little. One has to learn to meet at the middle road. We're balancing our material necessities. That's all. Not too much, not too little. That's also mentioned by Krishna in the sixth chapter of Gita. But what is our goal? Our goal is not to just to have a nice body and mind. It's it's there so we can engage the body and mind in the service of the Lord. The goal is to keep the body and mind working nicely so we can engage it in the service of the Lord. The devotees of the Lord are well wishes for everyone. Prabhupada used to sign his uh, letters, hope this meets you in the best of health, by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So Prabhupada always encourages devotees to take care of their health. Why? So they can engage nicely in devotional service. Not so they can become successful in material life. That's not the, that's not the principle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Does that make sense? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. But just one follow-up question, Maharaj. Um, now, the devotional service by itself, would it help us to kind of 
realize our spiritual nature without any uh, exclusive separate effort maharaj uh, on the realization that i am spirit soul like uh, the context maharaj i am asking anartha nivrutti when we speak no uh, i am hearing that just the chanting and devotion service may not help but we have to consciously make some efforts to uh, do anartha nivrutti is what i am hearing from uh, senior devotees uh, like whatever anartha are there for the individuals so in that context maharaj should we do anything explicitly to kind of uh, nurture that realization or would it happen automatically as part of devotion service itself it can happen automatically by the power of your devotional service but if you're feeding an art and vritti and you at the same time while you're engaging in devotional service process is going to be very slow mm. so you can't buy you can't feed two opposites and expect to get you know, the benefit of one so the thing is you have to decrease or eliminate those anarthas which will which are tying you down to the material energy or block mm. your progress in devotional service but the power of your chanting and devotional service is is quite is enough to uproot these things but still if we simply emphasize the chanting and then go ahead and feed your anarthas then you're you know slowing it's like trying to build a fire by pouring water on it every once in a while mm -hmm. so yeah krishna says in the bhagavad gita yes it's difficult to control the mind but you have to practice and you have to give up those things which cause you your mind to become under control uncontrolled he says that to arjun so yeah stop the negative and emphasize positive but the positive is more powerful than the negative because the negative is simply a shadow and this positive is the is the reality darkness is just an illusion because it's the absence of the sun when you bring in the sun the darkness goes but how how effective are you in bringing in the light of the holy name if you can do that it'll happen automatically but then again you have to be aware that it's going to happen automatically yes but still i should distance myself from those things which are going to take away from the effects of of chanting it's just natural but you put more emphasis on the chanting okay thank you maharaj um where did he go he disappeared i i think his um he just dropped off if i'm not mistaken yeah I think the connection dropped off because there was no light and maybe he'll probably will join by okay we point is made Uh, Ananga Kishore Ri. She there? <laughs> Ananga Kishore Mataji, are you there? Actually, Maharaj, we have one um, Niti. Hari Niti. Oh, there. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dhanvat Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory, Sushila Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, my uh, question is that uh, uh, during Srila Prabhupada's time, most of the devotees, they were living in the temple, serving full time, and they they could know they were under an authority. So they would know whether, whether they are pleasing the authority, doing the right thing. Uh, but now it's changed. Everybody, like I think almost 80 to 90% of the devotees live outside. So, um, and there's no barometer to know if what we are doing is right because everyone has their own view of what's uh, the right thing to do. Like, I think for someone, that it's book distribution. Somebody's it's uh, chanting extra rounds. Of course, everybody does the basic 16 rounds and four regulatory principles. But beyond that, everyone has their own idea of what devotional service is 
or what's the way to make progress so how do we know whether we are really pleasing our guru spiritual masters prabhupad because even like uh, now that the moment is growing yeah, our uh, spiritual yeah. masters are busy as well no no spiritual masters they're not busy that they don't take care of their disciples they take care of the disciples disciples have to make contact with the spiritual master what service can i do how can i serve you the authorities are still there. It's not that there's any loss in authority. It's that now you have to make an effort to connect to the authorities. That's all. And sometimes the authorities come to you. And sometimes you have to go to them. But in any case, the authority is still there. There's no loss in, in the, the connection. But people don't want. They want to do whatever they want. And... Sometimes the, the disciple, the, the the gurus, let them do whatever they want as long as they're doing some service. Because sometimes you tell people you have to do this service, they don't want to do that service. They want to do it their own service. So all right, we'll do something to satisfy Krishna by performing some activity in devotional service. But if you really want to make advancement, then you ask. You can also make advancement simply by serving, but you know you you can uh, the the wife is cooking for the husband, and he's coming home. You can cook anything you want, but if you know what he likes, you cook that, and then that's that's the best thing to offer. Similarly, if what is the spiritual? What will please the spiritual master the most? What will please Krishna the most? make an effort to find out <laughs> it's like we're here we're online now we're we're talking to about 80 people right now everyone can you know connect with some kind of spiritual sound vibration through this media and also understand more and more about their own spiritual practice they can also ask their spiritual master or an authority that would they have accepted to how can I serve? What would be the best way to serve? But people don't want that because they want to serve their own way because they don't want to do something that they might find difficult or inconvenient. And that's a neophyte devotee. The what does Bhakti Vinod Thakur say? He says, give me those the, give me those things that are difficult, and then I can offer something to you. <laughs> he prays for difficulties. Why? Because then I have a chance to really offer something to you. <laughs> but we have the fair weather devotees, you know, whatever. Well, you know, I can go feed the pigeons in the park, you know. <laughs> because it's prashadam and the pigeons are living entities. So. <laughs> but that may not be the best service that you could do. Thank you, Maharaj. We is have... It, is that clear? I want to see what she responded on that one. Uh, sure? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. It, uh, it's very nice what you said. I think it uh, something Srila Prabhupada would also say that I always ask Srila Bhakti Sanand Saraswati Thakur that how can I serve? So if we ask, if we make an effort to ask the uh, right people, right question, then we'll know of what to do and just do rather than feeding pigeons in the park well, as you said. You ask, but you have to do it after you get the message. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's so, so much important. People will ask and then they'll decide whether they want to do it or not. <laughs> yes, that's clear. Thank you very much. Devotional service is for your benefit. It's not for the benefit of the spiritual master. He's got his service. Everything is done for the benefit of the disciple. We don't even know our own benefit. We think we do, and that's the problem. Sure. Very true. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, Niti Kamataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mother? Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. 
I'm so thankful to Krishna that he's given me an opportunity to speak directly to you. So, and, uh, you know, he's the one right now who's given me, you know, few questions to ask, which keep rolling into my mind off and on, but uh, don't know where to ask. So uh, I ask you here, like, you know, uh, it's been quite some time that, uh, you know, I wake up, uh, I try to wake up earliest in the morning as possible. And uh, uh, I read uh, Srimad Bhagavatam first thing first. And then uh, I attend uh, uh, an online arti from Mayapur because uh, any temple from my place is like around 30 kilometers. So I attend the Mayapur arti regularly. And one thing that uh, concerns me is that if sometimes I, which happens very uh, seldom, like if I happen to miss my reading of Bhagavatam in the morning and directly do my japa. So something or the other, like the day doesn't go on as well as it does when I'm reading first thing first, uh, Sriman Bhagavatam in the morning. So, and the day I don't attend Mayapur Aarti and, and I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little late or maybe I am consumed in reading and then I skip the Aarti and straight away do my Japa in my temple or in my room, whatever. So missing out uh, reading and Aarti at that very time, uh, it just jeopardizes my day. Even if I do it later and during the day, I don't miss it for the entire day. It's just that that very time if I don't read and I do something as Japa or Aarti first. Okay. It really know, hampers I know, <laughs> something. I know one senior devotee, when he wakes up, he just writes. Yeah, He, he said, this is what I do. I, I write, then I chant later. You can read Bhagavatam and chant later. <laughs> That's fine. So, what could be the possible reason that uh, uh, you know, if I if I try to do something or the other at that time, it doesn't work out? Uh, what could be the reason? That's that's just you. You have a certain. <laughs> Is it that I'm very fallen or what? No, no, no. The process, as long as you include all of the activities, whether you take. Bhagavatam is not different. Or maybe Krishna is used to that more. I mean, Bhagavatam is not different than the holy name. But still, we have to chant the holy name also. Yeah, so that is what, you know, uh, confuses me. That everybody is doing, uh, you know, uh, 16 rounds first thing first in the morning. Uh, no. Am I the odd one out? <laughs> no, you're not the only one. I know another person, he likes to get up and clean clean the house first, and then he does his japa. These are senior devotees or <laughs> sannyasis. And there's others that like to write when they get up. There's others that that are like you. They like to read Bhagavatam first. It's fine. But don't neglect your rounds, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my Thank you. Hare Krishna. You're okay. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 Even if, you know, uh, the Mayapur Aarti, which is online, it is so effective. I understand the day when I don't attend it. So, <laughs> I'm stuck to particular things at particular times in the morning. So, even though I wake, try to wake up earliest, so I have to rush for everything that I have to complete all these three things in that certain time. Okay. Brahma Mura. <laughs> Nicely. Yeah, it's not how much we do, it's how it's how what what consciousness we do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, continue. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Just don't get don't just don't get all kinds of nervous because you're not perfect yet. That's all. <laughs> Perfection will come in time, the due course of time. 
Take pleasure in reading Bhagavatam. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do that. And it's another energy in the morning to read Bhagavatam. Yeah, it's nice. It's a different energy. It's very nice. It's a good thing to read them too. Yeah, yes, Maharaj. I think we are struggling in the material, spiritual world more than struggling in material world. Like materialistic people, they struggle for their, you know, sense gratification or some work or something. But we struggle more than that for Krishna, right, Maharaj? One is struggling depends what what is going to be the outcome of your struggle. Material struggle leads to more struggle. Yeah. Spiritual struggle leads to purification of the heart. <laughs> but this is worth uh, struggling for, right? Huh? Know, this is worth worth uh, struggling, you know, for Krishna. I think you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you always come to remind me, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our service when i remind you i also remind myself <laughs> mm. yeah knowledge is like that when we share with others we that increases that doesn't decrease yeah we got a question from Veronica. Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances for you, Maharaj, and all the devotees. As always, uh, it's wonderful to have you with us every morning. Um, uh, I I can I can't avoid feeling something. Um, like my heart melting when I uh, hear from Pralat Maharaj. I, do, I don't know um, if I can make you a, a personal question. It's, it's about um, what are your feelings about Pralat Maharaj? Uh, I don't know if I can make that questions, but I, I my heart is, I don't know. <laughs> Pralat Maharaj is a Mahajan. He's one of the 12 great personalities who's qualified to teach the process of pure devotional service. Srila Prabhupada, when he gave his lectures, he spoke on Prahlad Maharaj more than any other topic in the Bhagavatam. You can find at least three to four times in different occasions that Prabhupada spoke on Prahlad Maharaj and this pastime. Lord Chaitanya also, when he would like to listen to Bhagavatam, he would ask Gadadhar Pandit to read the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. These were his two favorite. So yes, Prahlad Maharaj is very attractive to the devotees. Because he's 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 a great soul and he's only five years old. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Continue. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, devotees, for your great question. Please feel free to um, switch on your cameras so Maharaji can look at you, bless you. And don't hesitate to go ahead and ask your questions, please. Feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, whatever is whatever works better for you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanat Talam. Uh, this is Vali from Naperval. We met in the temple when we are here, Hare Krishna. I'm so blessed to hear your uh, nice class privileges and all the question and answers are also so much enlightening today. Um, when you said Prahlad Maharaj uh, 
any story was coming again and again whenever Prabhupada gives his lectures, right? And we always listen only a five-year, six-year Prahalad Maharaj, and we don't hear much about later part of his story. So is there any other way uh, to learn um, his you know, story after that? Because we yeah. hear a part when it comes to Bali Maharajas, when Vamana Deva comes, but what what is there? The feeling, the gaps in between, I don't know. Your, your, how question, to... your question is how to find more information on Prahlad Maharaj. There is another scripture, it's called Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. The Hari Bhakti Sudodaya is a scripture mm -hmm. that describes more and more about Prahlad Maharaj and Yoga Maharaj in that Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. Sri Devi, mm -hmm. write that up and put it up on the thing. Where's Sri Devi? Is she there somewhere? Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, you know that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. You get that scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read more and more about the life of Prahlad, which is not many of the things in the Hari book, the Sudodaya, is not in the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Sure, Maharaj. I will try to. Thank you, Maharaj. Very wonderful class. And <clears throat> when you said the example of the car, I was laughing at myself because we buy these expensive uh, properties, we say, like uh, houses or cars. and. Uh, Oh, so much of loans and we are earning to only save for to pay those loans only not, nothing to use more of those that was so so wonderful Maharaj that's what we are doing in day to day life that's what I was thinking Maybe. struggling a lot to get to the work and uh, saving only a bit of that and that too only to pay the loans back to this uh, cars and other stuff that we buy that is very nice Maharaj <laughs> Hare Krishna Okay, anyone else? <laughs> Any last minute questions for His Holiness? Darshani from Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, and pronounce all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. Very grateful to talk to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I just had this question that uh, since our parampara is called, you know, Shiksha Parampara or Bhagavat Parampara, like apart from our initiating spiritual master, we tend to take guidance from one particular very senior devotee, right? So I just wanted to know if our service to them will continue even in the spiritual world. Uh... Yeah, and your your relationship with your spiritual master is eternal. And Prabhupada said, "Yes, the when you come back to the spiritual ma world, you'll recognize your spiritual master, and you'll also be engaged in devotional service there. Eternal guru's relationship once it's established." It becomes eternal. <laughs> so Maharaj, that relationship even with the Shiksha Guru also continues? Apart from the Diksha Guru, even with Shiksha Guru also it continues? Shiksha Guru? Um, if you wanted to, depends. You have to make it happen. Okay. How was he ended with yeah, if you want that relationship, but it can also continue. Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru are two sides of the same coin. Two two sides of the same coin, yeah. You can't separate Diksha and Shiksha. They're both equally powerful. That's mentioned, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So yeah, you can have an eternal relationship with your Shiksha Guru also. Thank you, thank you so much, Maharaj. Guru is one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
there's only one color. There's three colors, red, yellow, and blue. But from those three colors, you can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors. The guru is there, and therefore there may be many gurus, but ultimately guru is one. <laughs> means that he is the representative of to you for your relationship with the Supreme Lord. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Stand up and answer. Devi Mataji. Thank you, Dina. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, Guru Maharaj, as you are speaking, one thought is coming, one question is coming to my mind. Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, all these great Mahajans, they're pure devotees, they're fixed in devotional service. But just like many have expressed, we are all still at that struggling stage. We are still struggling with anarthas, with so many um, attachments, with our past conditioning. So how can we reach that platform of steadiness, of becoming fixed in uh, devotional service? How can we reach that stage quickly? Yeah, when you, when, you, when you don't want anything to do with the material world. That's the fast track. When you've given up all of your attempts to try to enjoy in this material world, then you can make fast progress in devotional service. Mm -hmm. Even if you have desires, still don't don't act on them. It's slow because we're still looking towards the material energy for something. That doesn't mean to give up your family. It means give up your desire to enjoy in this material world. That's all. Mm -hmm. Responsibilities are one thing. Enjoyment is another thing. You can't enjoy material energy because we are not material. But we're still trying. <laughs> because my makes us think there's something out there that we can enjoy. As soon as you stop trying to enjoy material energy, progress is very fast. <laughs> then you should inquire how to make progress. We mentioned that earlier. All right, I'm I've given up the desire to enjoy material energy. So now how now how can I serve? What is the best way for me to serve? But haven't we heard that if we artificially try to renounce or suddenly give up, then we'll again go the other way, bhog tyag, bhog tyag. The senses do require some satisfaction. So how to find that middle road where we are not overdoing something and uh, then having some issues later on? Yeah. Krishna says not too much, not too little. Find a balance. Mm -hmm. As I explained, you have to take care of the car, but you don't spend all day polishing the car. <laughs> you have to eat so you Krishna prasadam at regulated times you have to sleep sleep at regulated times just what you need you have to do some responsibilities in the family but don't make that your main goal in life all of these extra the, the things that, that are related to the body 
is done as a duty and not as a source of happiness. Happiness comes from on the, is on the spiritual platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You make your family Krishna consciousness, then in your then all of the family members work together. They still they they still interact in a family situation, but now they're all devotees. All everyone is serving. I think we've discussed this pro this principle so many times, but it keeps coming up because we haven't got it yet. <laughs> We still oh, think no. there's still some happy, yeah, because the material energy is always reminding us in so many different ways. Maya knows your attachments, and she'll just like the uh, secular society has a program to kind of monitor your spending. They figure out how people spend their money on different things, and then they send advertisement based on that spending. So Maya knows how you spend your time and she'll send you more advertisements on that same spending program. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Wonderful analogy. <laughs> Very true, Maharaj. Any questions for His Holiness? Okay, we can stop here. Thank you, Maharaj. We will offer our humble obeisances at Maharaja's lotus feet. One shakalpata rubhyashya kripa sindhu bevacha patita nam pavani vishnavishnu